Hello, welcome back to the Villa View. Safe to say, not many people will have seen that coming. Aston Villa 1, QPR 3. Let's hear what the fans have to say. Really, really bad night at Villa Park. How did, how did you see the game? Uh, I thought I'd just blame it on the midfield, to be honest. I don't think there was much effort from the middle. From the middle. Uh, I think the wingers were offering a lot, but the centre-half, they weren't playing it out from the back, and they're playing long ball, and there weren't re really many people offering anything. There weren't many triangles that's in the game. I think Grealish is the only one who can take it forward. I think a lot of people didn't blame in Yedinak, but I think he mopped up the second balls, and I think he's the only one in that game who was winning headers against QPR. QPR came out with a game plan. I think we should have switched it up and played two up top and went attacking from the start because I don't think their defence is really all that, to be honest. We come here with an attitude today that we were going uh, we were going to walk straight over and get a few set pieces. We snog grass, a few goals. And we deserve that today. Yeah. We, deserve, we deserve nothing more than that today. We were absolutely dire. There should not be fatigue at championship level. League one, league two, fair enough. When you've got you know your Johnson paint, Mickey Mouse trophies in midweek, and then you've got all these other games. But these are players on 30, 40 grand a year. They shouldn't be having the excuse of we're just tired. I mean, I go to work every morning. I'm tired, but I still turn up and do my best. I'm not saying they weren't doing their best. I think no, I think yeah, I think, yeah, I think they've come out they've come yeah, out and done their best. That's a bit yeah, Kate. Yeah, that is a bit harsh. But they shouldn't be using tiredness. I mean, they've got a bench for a reason. They've got a good squad. Yeah. We swap it round. Coming into it, I just you, we had to get the three points after Saturday, and uh, typical Villa, you know, they impressed at the weekend, and then the next game they like turn up thinking, oh, we've beat Wolves, we'll beat everyone now, and then. Fair play to QPR, they played well, so, and our lot didn't, did the turn up. So. Adoma was making the crosses, but then he just wasn't getting past the front man. And then there was only one person in the box that couldn't, and then he couldn't do anything on his own, which is pointless really, naming the crosses in. He might as well just play it through the middle to Greedish. It's, just, it's pointless. Cardiff winning again tonight, the Wolves win yeah, tonight, yeah, yeah. well there you go then. So, you know, if we, if we can't turn over QPR... There's no point winning against teams like Wolves and turning up here against Cardiff in a couple of weeks because we can't do the bread and butter. No support from the midfield at all. Like everyone's static, everyone's staying st staying in the place. No one's pushing forward, helping everyone that's push pushing forward as well. It's not not much support at all. I don't really understand why we stooped as well to QPR's level at the end of the day. They were only coming here to play a long ball. And we've got technical players who are able to play out from the back. And for some reason we were just hitting long balls, but We've no target man up front. We brought on Keenan Davis in the second half, but I think it was too little, too late. At the end of the day, like, I don't know, I think it's just typical Villa. We've been on such a good form lately, and if you go back, you go back a few seasons, when we are the favourites and when everyone's thinking we're going to win a game, we just don't, we just flop for some reason. Maybe they thought we could just walk over them and beat them, and I, th I think that... I think that we could have put um, Lansbury on, maybe. He could have maybe done some of it. Yeah, because he's come on before and, and done really good and trying to win it, but Steve didn't think so. What did you, Steve, nice. What did you, what did you, what did you think of... Do you think QPR actually actually played well or do you think it was just the fact that we weren't that good tonight? Well, I think they were the better team. They, yeah. they were the better team. They played well. They, they played well and they beat us. They, we, should have, we should have beat them. We should have beat them a lot. We should have, it was terrible. They weren't the best side I've ever seen. They, um, they've got nothing to play for at the end of the day. They've come here as free hit, Villa, hiding table, and they've given it a go. And they've Fair play to them, they've beat us, but nah, they were nothing special today. We were just we were dire. You have to win these matches at the end of the day. You can't win Wolves and you can't just do that on the Tuesday after. It's pointless. Do you think there was a bit of complacency after after obviously beating the team that's been the best team in the league on, on Saturday and then to come here and we kind of everyone just thought we'd get the job done, didn't they? Yeah, I think I think it was a bit complacent because like if if you beat Wolves like the best argue, argue the best team in this league, you should be expected to like beat QPR. So uh, but there might be might be a bit of pressure on the players, but they should be winning the game like this. Really, it's, it's disappointing. We got told at the start of the season Jed and that couldn't play how many games, yeah. and but he keeps. I mean, not picking on Jed and that, no, but. No, no. Um, you know, he's had three games. No, well, he has, hasn't he? Wednesday, um, Sunderland, and give him a rest. Get, but he honestly, and then he scored the goal on Saturday, and you think, oh, he'll be buzzing. And he sat on the bench, and you're thinking, you know, what, what's the lad got to do? So. So I think we're too reliable on a few players. Now, where was Jack Grealish in the second half? 
I'm not. I'm not being harsh because no, 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 he was. He was. He was. He's been our best player this season, but he didn't have no more than 15 touches in that second half, and it, it shows when he's not on the ball. <laughs> what do we have? You know what I mean? A dome, a few crosses. I didn't see him beat the front post once. Whether that's because he's right-footed, he should be on the right side. I don't know, but he didn't beat the front man. What do you make of the crossing? Because to me, we were just throwing balls in the box, yeah. and it wasn't working, and we kept doing it. Sure, if you, if if the tactic was to play crosses, I want to know why Hurahan wasn't getting in there. I want to know why the other winger wasn't getting in there. Because at the end of the day, Lewis Graben's not going to win you every header in the air. So, put it on the ground, try and make him get a few runs in there. But if you're going to put it in the air, you need to throw men in there. Because even when Hogan come on, sorry, not, not Hogan, Davis, we didn't put the ball in the box. The first time when you said that it was free at the back, that... that was it? So, you know, <laughs> the, but um, yeah, as I say, hopefully that's the one, the one drop, and we push on again. So, the, I was thinking we'd probably lose another one to come the end of the season. I just hoped it weren't like tonight. But we just seem to sort of flatter to deceive. It takes us longer to get going. I do if it's because like we ain't been in the pub and had a couple of pints before, and we've all come straight from work. I do if that's the difference. Yeah. It just seems really, really flat. I just thought the team, I could understand us going 1-0 down, the way they come out. QPR, all the way he's going to come here, he's going to get his lads set up to, to get into us, really. I could understand us going 1-0 down, but I didn't see the reaction. No, and the final ball tonight from all, all the ballers we've got out there, Snodgrass, Adoma, Grealish, the final ball was shocking. Saturday, backing us to bounce back against Bolton. Uh, yeah, Bolton... Bolton look up, not in the best of positions compared to us, but if you look at today, we managed to lose QPR, so we could lose to anyone really, but I hope we bounce back, yeah. Again, they've got a bit to play for, haven't they, at yeah. the moment? So, play. it's one of them. Well, I thought today we were going to win, and we haven't, so it's one of them. We have to go to Bolton on the weekend, and we just got to go out there and play our football, really, haven't we? And play to our strengths is what we didn't do today. Well, it's way from home, so hopefully a little pressure off and good way support go down there watch the lads and uh, yeah a few changes might be a good idea so rest a few and um, yeah hopefully um, we can get back to winning ways and push on to end of the season I think we'll learn I think we'll learn I think we'll, we'll come back on Saturday and we'll smash them and then we'll go I, I want to go on a run for the rest, the rest of the season I think we could do it but we just we need to do it I hope we'll bounce back I mean um, wasn't much positive play today. Um, hopefully, we can take take this as a learning point and actually have a game plan and actually push forward. And yeah, um, well, we were due a loss anyway. Yeah, so we were, we I hope this is just that little slip up. And for the rest of the season, last ten games, nine games now. I hope we do push forward and just crack on. And I hope we do go for automatic. But I can't really see Cardiff and Wolves slipping up that much more. So I hope this is just a blip. Yeah. And we do crack on. Got to go, you've got to be thinking we're going to go into every game and, and win it. I think that's it's, again, it's poor mentality if you think, oh, because of that, we're going to we're going to get spanked. I mean, I think the Fulham result put a bit of sense to us. Hopefully, it puts a bit of sense into us. Hopefully, we, we we'll go in a we'll go and show what we're really about. But I think I'd never really thought automatics was going to happen for us. I mean, it was nice to think it would, but nah, it's not not going to happen now. They've come off the pitch as as, as one tonight, all disappointed, all gutted. You'll see a different team uh, come Saturday against Bolton. And you can make changes. Tinker, maybe bring Bjornsson in. I don't know. I think a lot, you know, I'm in an iron tonight whether to play Yedinak and Bjornsson. I can understand why he stayed with that yeah. setup. I think he will have to tinker on um, on Saturday just to freshen it up a little bit. You've got to, I think, maybe bring Hogan back in. I don't know because a few games ago, Grealish and Hogan, we all saw it, didn't we? Uh, yeah. And then um, Adama and Snodgrass, them four going forward, it was electric. Grabham's come in. He's earned his place, so you've got to keep him in. Now's the time you can sort of tinker, I think, a little bit. A real miserable night down Villa Park. As I said in the intro, I didn't really see that coming at all. I mean, we went 1-0 one, one down. I think the atmosphere was very, very flat. We went one down. And then the second goal, I think they were queuing up to score. And then the unlucky deflection, you got you got the idea that it wasn't going to be our night. But no excuses, we, we weren't good enough. I, I don't think you can blame f fatigue. I think the subs... 
and the formation change in the second half arguably made us worse as well. We'll go into this game in more detail in the podcast on Wednesday night when me and Chris Dolan are in the horrible booth recording. So make sure you look out for that and tune into that when it's out on YouTube or iTunes if you prefer. If you have enjoyed this video, which I doubt many of you have, so just give it a like anyway, even if you haven't enjoyed enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel with your post notifications on to find out when all our videos are coming first. Comment below with your thoughts going into the rest of the season. Now, the nine final games are coming up. As I say, I don't think any of us saw that coming, but how, how do you feel now? Do you think autos are gone, or do you think other teams will slip up and we can still do it? Thanks for all your support. Thanks for watching. Up the Villa. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.